So what is the perfect recipe for preparing a hard-boiled egg? Now serving an inside look at the show that answers nearly all your culinary questions. Our server is Martha Teichner. A whole year before publication, America's Test Kitchen was fine-tuning a contender for its newest cookbook at its headquarters in Boston, a recipe for roasted carrots and shallots. Is it salty enough, not too salty? Day one of testing was about experimentation. There's a sweetness with A. It's a natural carroty sweetness, mm -hmm. where B tastes a bit more flat. On day two, the test chefs made adjustments. I'm going to try roasting the carrots less. And try it again. This one turned out really nice. Their conclusion? Medium-sized carrots, any kind, cooked in butter at 450 degrees. End of story. Thanks, guys. Not in this busy place. On any given day, a television show is likely being shot. I'm gonna cook these with the lid down. A dozen or more recipes are being developed in the test kitchen. For flavor, I like number five, nice and sweet. Food stylists tidy up plates for photographers. I like that angle. The pictures for a future cookbook, a magazine. I think we're good. Or one of America's test kitchen's websites. So you're the hand model? I am, I, I mean. Do you take special care of your hands? Yeah, I mean. I'll get a phone call once in a while. Do you mind just going to get a manicure? Are you kidding? Does that well, cake look that. good enough to eat? What's left is headed for the take-home fridge, an irresistible perk for ATK's growing staff, who now number almost 200. In 2017, the expanding edible empire moved to this 55,000 square foot space along Boston's waterfront. So we have the two television shows, our two magazines, about 15 books a year, and then our websites. Chief Creative Officer Jack Bishop, like a lot of ATK's experts, is a regular on the TV shows. What makes a great fish sauce? More protein. Dispensing the often surprising results of ATK research. Searing meat does not seal in juices. You do not need to sift flour. You should be steaming your eggs rather than boiling them. Uh, we have about 5,000 books. Bishop co-founded the company in 1993. And the mission really has been the same for 25 years, which is to empower home cooks to succeed in their own kitchens. I tell you, once you know how to cook salmon this way, it's a game changer. It was and is the opposite of slick. America's Test Kitchen. The first host of ATK's TV shows wasn't some flashy celebrity chef. We spend most of our time eating bad food. It was nerdy New Englander Christopher Kimball. <laughs> A little dry. This was not an obvious blueprint for the huge success ATK has had. Garlic breath is actually a very real phenomenon. Especially since the company didn't then and doesn't now accept any advertising. Well, the one problem is the handles get really hot over a gas flame. In addition to the recipes, the review content is a very important part of the mission at America's Test Kitchen. And that's difficult to do if you are also accepting advertisements from the same companies that you're then reviewing. 500. Lisa McManus gets paid. All right, here we go. Sorry, little pan. To abuse stuff. It's still on for now, we'll see. That was very warped. In this case, skillets. Wow, okay, bad. In order to figure out which ones. Warped. Still warped. Are tough enough to take it. We're getting there. Just think the job satisfaction. You know, we always try to find out why did the winners win and the losers lose. We don't just say, take our word for it. We want to prove why. As executive tasting and testing editor, how's that for a title? Her rigor is part of the reason people trust ATK product recommendations. Today, I've got some of the worst gadgets of the year. Trust is the reason ATK's cooking shows reach more than four million viewers. We tested a lot of ways to heat up the skillet. We found that the oven worked best. Our whole business is cooking things the wrong way so that we can eventually find the right way. Bridget Lancaster and Julia Colin Davison, two longtime test chefs, host the TV shows now. After you've washed your parsley, you put it back into a bundle. You take your knife and you just start shaving it. 
just like really? this on the outside. They come across like skilled stand-ins for their viewers. God, that's so easy. Who truly eat up their advice. That's such a great technique. <laughs> I learned. <laughs> wow. Which brings us back to that carrot and shallot recipe. We sent it out to be road tested by volunteer home cooks. And if we don't get 80% of the people to say, yes, I want to make that recipe again, it goes back into our test kitchen and gets reworked. About 90% of my kitchen equipment is based upon their recommendations. <laughs> Stephanie Patterson of Worcester, Ohio, is one of 17,000 volunteer home cooks who signed up on the website to test recipes. Currently in my email, there's four new ones to test. And how long have you done this? Nine years. Carol Chris of Holmdel, New Jersey is another. It's almost like there's too many recipes and too little time, you know. <laughs> <laughs> to say they're groupies is an understatement. I'm on their Facebook group. And on Instagram, there's a lot of people. <laughs> so it's like a club. Or, yeah, it's or definitely a, a club. For Patterson, who has muscular dystrophy, it's actually more. It's a world. And I feel like I'm helping them make the recipe as good as it can be before they print it. And it makes you part of their family. Exactly, yes, yeah. So did they like the carrots and shallots? Hi, Marks. Hi, hi, Marks. The shallots <laughs> are sensational. The recipe mm. made the cut. It's on page 86 of America's Test Kitchen's just-released Vegetables Cookbook. That's very good. Mm -hmm.